Right, so I've got uh, this B550i Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, it's a mini ITX board. And I've got this processor now running just the way I want it. And I thought I'd go through some of the bias settings with you uh, to understand how, uh, how it works and some of the good settings uh, to use. So let's uh, restart the computer. So I'm just gonna hit the delete key uh, when it restarts to get into the bias. You have to hit it quite fast, otherwise it goes um, straight into Windows. So just after I've started to uh, build a computer, one of the first things I'll do is I'll check the voltage. Um, before loading Windows or anything else, I'll always check the voltage um, of the 12 volt rail and the 5 volt rail and the 3.3 volt rail as well. Uh, in these settings, it's showing me the 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Uh, and these look pretty good. So normally you expect the voltages to be slightly higher um, than the nominal. So here we've got 12.168 and 5.04. And what tends to happen is, uh, as you're pulling load on the CPU and GPU, which are on the 12 volt rail, this voltage will drop slightly. Um, you get a bit of voltage droop and it'll go down to around 12 volts, which is what you want. And that tends to happen in, in, on cool, pretty much everything unless you've got um, unless you've got a digital power supply, in which case it should be 12 volts all the time. Right, so uh, some of the settings I've got um, down here, I've actually set the CPU clock ratio to 37. So this is a 3700X CPU, and I'm running it at uh, basically uh, 3.7 gigahertz. Uh, so I've typed in here at 37. One of the main reasons for doing this is I've turned off um, some of the, the, the turbo boost setting, if you like. So it doesn't go up to 4.4 gigahertz. It stays on 3.7 all the time. 3.7 gives me plenty of performance. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm after. It also runs a lot quieter um, than setting it. Um, <coughs> Than setting it to its standard default settings. Uh, in this scenario at 3.7, it runs at about 1.1 volts uh, under heavy load instead of out of the box, sort of 1.33 volts. Right, so if we come down, um, here I've got the DRAM voltage. So this is actually uh, one of the settings you'll need to change. Uh, so in, in the uh, XMP profile, I've put in the profile, which uh, is the DDR4 3200. However, um, the 1.35 volts didn't change on the board at this location. Uh, so it should be running at 1.35 volts. However, when I typed in 1.35 volts here, the actual motherboard is giving the, uh, the RAM about 1.4 volts. So I've actually uh, adjusted it uh, a fraction. So I've come down to 1.3 volts, which is actually more like 1.35 volts. And I'll show you that in a minute. Right, so we've got some CPU settings. I've left everything else on auto. Um, what else? We've got some advanced CPU settings here. So in here, basically, I've, I've turned the core performance boost just to disabled. Uh, to run it at 3.7 instead of um, it was actually running about 4.2 just over but I'm running the standard um, CPU cooler and the problem with that is the, the standard CPU cooler has got plenty of performance but it's very very noisy um, when it's running at around 4.2 or 4.4 so I've slowed it down a fraction and this computer is for one of the kids so it's, it's giving plenty of performance at 3.7 Right, let's just go back into easy mode. So if you look now on the easy mode, this is one of the things to look for, the memory voltage at the top. So although I've typed in to the memory voltage 1.3, it's actually giving 1.344, which is pretty much what I'm after. So this is sort of uh, running at the perfect uh, sort of voltage. And it's one thing to, uh, yeah, to double check. Right, so I'm now going to look at the uh, the fan settings. So I'm going to the smart fan settings. This is the CPU 
fan setting that I've got. It's set here to manual uh, and it's obviously on the CPU. The CPU at the minute is running at 45 degrees C uh, and these are the other temperatures that the system is recording. You can actually get the system fans to run off any of these temperatures but I prefer to run it off a CPU. So what I've done is here each one of these lines is 10 degrees C so we've got 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees C and then the, the fan profile starts to go up and I think this is quite a good fan profile. Now I don't like the fan to go up and down every five seconds so what I've done is I've set it reasonably high here so it's running at 1300 RPM or 1200 at 40 uh, degrees C and then it goes up to about 2000 RPM max at this 3.7 and it keeps the process up around 60 to 62 degrees so well within its capabilities and obviously that means the, the, uh, the CPU is going to run cool the system is going to run cool but more importantly it's going to run quiet and the system only pulls up to about 55 watts maximum at this 3.7 setting instead of 90 watts straight out of the box so if we go here and we come down to fan one, so system fan one is the fan that's in the back of the PC um, that gets uh, that I got for free if you like. Uh, and again, what I've done is I've set it so at 40 degrees C is the first point, and then it starts ramping up slightly. Uh, the rear fan set at 1144 RPM. In this Ryzen Tech case, the rear fan's got the uh, the rear fan has got uh, LEDs on it uh, so I need to run it at least about around a thousand to eleven hundred rpm to make the LEDs light up right so we've got system fan 2 <clears throat> this is the Noctua fan that I put in the top and this is set to a lot lower so uh, the fan speed on this one is 694 rpm or just under 700 rpm um, at this setting and then it ramps up as the system gets hotter <clears throat> this actual fan goes up to around 1700 rpm but i don't actually run it anywhere near that that speed because there's no need uh, it tops out around 1300 on this system when it's um, being fully utilized i've also changed here <clears throat> on system fan one and two to run off the cpu temperature okay guys Thank you very much for watching.